K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Sunday mornings at his regular time, 6 Central, 7 Eastern. Join with him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord. Right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Here's a few tips in finding Richard's podcast. Go to the World Wide Web at k98talk.com. Scroll down to Podcasts. When Podcast comes up, look for a red button with a white plus sign in it. Open this content in a new window by clicking the link. When a new website appears, click on Shows. Then scroll to God's Pure Word of Faith. Click on the name and a list of programs will come up. That's it. Now enjoy God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rail. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. You're listening to God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden. Richard will guide you through the Bible and help you find God's purpose for your life. Now here's teacher and author Richard Harden. Welcome to God's Pure Word of Faith this morning. I'm Richard Harden. I'll be here with you now for the next hour. And first, I want to thank the Lord and the management of K98 Talk for this great opportunity to share God's Word again with you today. I have a story I'm going to share with you today that's one of my favorite. And I have a lot of favorite stories in the scriptures, but this is one of them right up there in the top. And the reason is because, you know, God comes to us in his love so many ways, but there's only one way we can respond positively to any of God's love, and that is through faith. Faith, it says in Hebrews 11, 6, it's impossible to please God without faith. For he that cometh to God must not only believe that he is, but that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I know many of you listening probably have been seeking the Lord about a concern or something for many years. and um, It's disturbing like that. And I hope this morning this message of King Jehoshaphat will help 
maybe you get your breakthrough and get through to the Lord and everything and, and see something in this that might be missing from what you're doing or something, you know. I don't know, but I, I know it'll be an encouragement to you, though, because King Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles chapter 20 is one of the great stories of the Bible on how to obtain faith if you're seeking and trying and, and just want to get through. Now, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 26, it starts out and says, King Jehoshaphat feared when he was told he was surrounded by three armies. Now, he feared, yes. He, he didn't know what to do. And when you're in doubt, when a sudden fear or something like this, you know, it's easy for the devil to come in and torment you. But anyway, he feared. And he looked for guidance from the Lord. The Lord answered him then. You know, the, uh, God and his word are the same. It says in the scriptures in first, uh, let's see, in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. See, God and his word are the same. And his living word is Christ. So God spoke to Jehoshaphat and his country. They received his living word, Christ, for that situation to give them guidance. Then they obeyed, they accepted and received his living word then. And that's what faith is, acceptance and obedience to God's word. Because if you reject God's word, it's called unbelief. But now, accepting and receiving God's word into you know to your heart for that situation and everything is faith. So now, they accepted and received God's word. And his word to them was, for the, being surrounded by three armies, he said, it's my battle, not yours. You just go set yourself in the morning out in the valley there and watch the victory. Now, see, that was kind of a strange word to them, uh, to just march out of the gates in the sense of the city, singing praises, and watch the victory. Well, now, you have to accept that or reject it. They accepted it to faith, and then their confession of faith was, it's God's battle, not ours. And they were walking by faith then from that time on, and the uh, from the time God had spoken to them until the next morning. So all through that night, early the next morning, they placed their lives on the line and marched out of the gate singing praises to God before the three armies. Now you think about that, like uh, three armies surrounding us, or, you know, so many wars going on around the world. If, if somebody would just say, okay, you just put your weapons down and everything, you just march out of those gates and you just march out in front of the enemy there, and uh, put your lives on the line, and not only your lives on the line, but see, when they marched out of the gates and left the uh, city unprotected and everything behind them, well, once they got killed, you know, the people would come in and kill their wives and children or take them for slaves or whatever. So the whole country, or this whole city then, uh, many from around the country had come to join with Jehoshaphat, but for, for all of those, their life and their families were totally on the line. You think about that for the ones you love. You're making a, a choice to obey this word, to march out of the gate singing praises, and there's a lot at stake for it. Now, we know God told them to do it, and we know what happened because we read the scripture and the story, but they didn't know exactly how things were going to come about but they had to trust God enough now see trust is different than faith you trust God enough to accept his words to faith and then do even though it sounds ridiculous to do what he tells you to do so the next morning they got up marched out of the gate singing praises God performed the victory and it took them three days to get their deliverance and everything. Now, I want to come back and go through this story in a little bit more detail. But before I do, I want to share with you my website because I have some, uh, I have six books I've written. I'll be sharing out of one of the books today, some of it, you know, about storage, host fats in my book, uh, Choosing Faith with Love. But also, I have a video on YouTube that there's a link on my website to the videos. And there's a video, one of my most watched videos is about Jehoshaphat and this story I'm going to be sharing with you today. So I'm going to share with you now the uh, website information and I'll be right back then to uh, tell you the story in a little more detail. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com 
That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Welcome back. Now, Jehoshaphat. This is in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Um, and we'll be looking at verses 1 through 26. Now, the story is recorded there. Now, it starts stating, it starts out stating in verse 1, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea, and this side of Syria. And behold, they be in in, in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, to proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Now, this is so important here because uh, fear is when, you know, you're in a situation where you don't know what to do. Fear lets you know that there's some doubt in your life from somewhere. When you start getting fear in your life, it's the devil coming to you to try to keep you and terrorize you and keep you from finding God's will about what to do. Now, fear is not the emotions and everything so many think it is. If you look in uh, 2 Timothy 1, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear is the devil. See, it doesn't say the emotion of fear. Now, we're physical being, an emotional being, or a, a, we have a soul which includes emotions and mind. And then as Christians now, we have a spirit, Christ in our heart. But now, Joseph at being the Old Testament didn't have Christ in his heart. But the devil attacked him then, trying to cause him uh, so many strong emotions, you know, like uh, when fear comes to us, we we're terrorized, you know, we're confused, we're not sure what to do, and things like this. And that's what happened to Jehoshaphat. See, he didn't know what to do. What am I going to do about this? Three armies surrounding me were so outnumbered and everything. But now, when this happens, he gives us a good example then of what we need to do that uh, turn to the Lord like he did. The devil tries to terrorize people to keep them from turning to the Lord because he knows if they turn to the Lord and God gives them his answer that he's defeated in the situation. So now, Jehoshaphat feared. In the first instant of fear, he set himself to seek the Lord. Let fear in your life be your red flag to identify the devil coming against you. It's the instant you start having fear, well, like in Philippians 4, 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in all things, with prayer and supplication, let your request be known to God. So let that first instant of fear, don't hang on to it, you know, or try to maybe figure out something yourself, or just, oh, what am I going to do, and this or that, whatever, you know. Turn to the Lord. Set yourself to seek the Lord, and He'll bless you even for doing that, because He knows that so many people don't turn to Him. He knows that nowadays that, you know, turn to alcohol, drugs, whatever, you know, something like that. Anyway, turn to the Lord, seek the Lord. Now, the first three verses show that King Jehoshaphat is faced with a serious problem. So serious, he feared. And again, fear is a symptom of Jehoshaphat's problem, just like I, for us. The problem is he's suddenly faced with a situation and has doubt as to what to do about it. Now, when we have doubt in a serious situation, either because we do not know what God wants us to do or we're unaware of his presence, the devil will try to take advantage of it, torment us, and um, again, this is how we get out of it then, by setting ourselves to seek the Lord. Now, we should do as Jehoshaphat did. Set ourselves to seek the Lord, and as I discussed a while ago, 
during the seeking like that, he prayed and he fasted. Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast as part of his seeking. Now, again, fasting. Fasting is not just giving up something. You know, you think about sacrifice, and I'm going to sacrifice for the Lord, and I'm going to give up this and give up this. No, that's not, you're not sacrificing for the Lord. He doesn't want your sacrifice. He wants your heart. Now, what it is, the purpose of fasting, <coughs> excuse me, to give up something, you pick something that you really like or that you use frequently. You know, like most of us use food quite often. That's why it's so associated with food. But uh, if you smoke, give up smoking. If you're a person that drinks, give up drinking. If you watch too much television, give up television. See, something that's really a big part of your life, you give that up. And say like they did here, three days. And three days is kind of like common fast throughout the Bible. So, so pick three days. Give up whatever that is that's taking so much of your time, you know, that you're just kind of almost like addicted to whatever it is, smoking or drinking or to, you know, eating too much, overeating. And now, what makes it a fast then, biblically, is that during that time, you pick three days, every time you think of what you've given up, whether it be eating, smoking, or whatever, Pray. Now, what do you pray for? You pray for your concern. You pray for whatever that circumstance is in your life that's troubling. If a doctor just told you you have cancer, I remember when he told me that in 1987, over the phone, my hair, what little I had, still stood straight up, I thought. But I hung that phone up after I talked to that doctor, went around to my living room, got on my knees at the couch and started praying, and I got up for there and from there in a few minutes with peace. I knew the Lord's presence in that situation. I knew that there no fear. And that's 1987. I don't know how many years now. 20 something. 27. Whatever. I haven't had another problem or concern about it. Now. We must pray every time we think about what we're fasting from. Fast from cigarettes. Every time you think of a cigarette. The first thing you do is you pray for lost loved one maybe and in yourself whatever your special concern is start praying for yourself and then Lord deliver me these cigarettes you know just if you're fasting from food every time you start you know craving that food you pray for your special concern whatever it is a health problem or salvation or something and then pray for yourself now that's what makes it a fast is you let whatever you're giving up remind you to pray and talk to God. See, it's to bring you into fellowship with God during that time. That's the purpose of fast. Not to just sacrifice it. Oh, Lord, I'm giving up this food for you. I'm doing this for you, and I'm doing it. Say, no, no, you're not trying to bargain with him. You're using the fast to bring you into fellowship with him. Now, so instead of responding like you normally would and pig out or eat something like that or smoke another cigarette, take that time with the Lord. He will help you then. Now, depending on what you give up, you know, uh, as being part of your life, when when I fast from food the first day, you know, I'm almost like in continuous prayer. And that's the purpose of it. So you'll get so many blessings out of it. Instead of eating like that, you think about it and you uh, pray and get in fellowship with the Lord. Now, we may pray continually during that time. When Jehoshaphat heard that the three armies surrounded him, immediately... A hope was developed. His hope was for deliverance from the three armies, naturally. He trusted God enough to turn to God for help in this time of trouble. So from the beginning, Jehoshaphat was placing his hope and trust in God. His hope for deliverance was placed in God. From his relationship with God, Jehoshaphat knew he could trust God at this point. So Jehoshaphat's trust now became the substance of his hope. See, because his trust in God, he was hoping in God. Now, if he did not trust in God, he probably would have placed his hope in obtaining help from some other source, you know, like another nation or something like that to help him with this battle, as King Asa did in Second Chronicles um, chapter 16. Now, when he turned to Syria for help instead of God. But Jehoshaphat's hope, his desired outcome, was for deliverance from three armies. He placed his hope in God because he trusted in God. That God would provide a victory, even though at this time you know he had no idea what the victory would be or how it would you know come about. But then in um, verses four to thirteen, listen to Jehoshaphat now. And 
in the scripture it states, and Judah gathered themselves. He was king of Judah, the smaller part of Israel. Okay, now, gather themselves together, ask the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation and uh, well, in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, now this is prayer, O Lord, God of my fathers, art thou not the God in heaven that rulest not over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art thou not our God, who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before the people of Israel, and gave it to us, the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary uh, therein for thy name, saying, If, now this is the uh, uh, written promises that Jehoshaphat had that he's quoting back here, because when Solomon and God uh, had that dedication ceremony in 1 Kings chapter 8 about the new temple, and this is the temple they're standing before now to, to uh, pray, there was promises confirmed there, and so he went to his written promises. And that's what we should do. Seek God from his written word and his promises for whatever our situation, our circumstances are. Now here it is, saying, If when evil come upon us as a sword judgment, pestilence, famine, and we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. That's what he's basing his hope on, that God's going to hear and help him now. And now, behold, the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom thou would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us. They come to cast us out of our possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. See, we don't know what to do, but we're looking to you. And then all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Now, it was a whole, you know, wives, children, their animals, everything, fasting here, you know. And they're basing their hope now on God's written word to them at the dedication of the temple Solomon, between Solomon and God. He knew the written promises, and he was responding to them, and that's the way we should be. We should seek the Lord, like in, uh, what is it, uh, Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16, where God says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Seek the Lord. Now, these particular three armies that was coming against them uh, were three armies that God had been blessing and blessing for so many years. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, verses 4, 9, and 19, the scripture states that these three armies were the descendants of Esau, the Edomites, and the other two armies were descendants of Lot's two daughters. And God had given each of these three countries an inheritance himself already. And uh, God had helped them, you know, kill out the giants in those lands. And they were settled in their lands. And um, this had been, well, ever since before the children of Israel even went into Egypt and into the slavery. So these three countries and these armies of these three countries had been blessed for many, many centuries and everything. And... Uh, in fact, when they were coming out of the children of Israel were coming out of bondage and they were going to pass by these three countries, if you look in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 2, let me read you a couple of verses here from this, how God had blessed these countries. In, uh, let's see, the first one here is in chapter 2 of Deuteronomy. Moses is speaking to him and God spoke to him and he said, and command, command thou the people saying, this is starting in verse 4. You are to pass through the coast of your brethren. See, he's calling these Edomites, Esau's descendants, their brethren, which dwell in Seir. And they shall be afraid of you. Take you good heed to yourselves, therefore. Verse 5. Meddle not with them. God's telling the Moses and them, 
meddle not with them, but they're your brothers. For I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breadth. I won't give you one foot of their land, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau for a possession. See, that land is taken by a country that he was blessing, you know, Esau's descendants there. And he says, I'm not giving you a foot of it. Well, if you go on down to verse 9, Lord said unto me, speaking to Moses again, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of your land for a possession, of their land for a possession, because I have given heir unto the children of Lot for a possession. See, that's one of the daughters of uh, Lot. Now, in verse 19, the other, verse 19, And when thou comest over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given Ammon this land. I've given it unto the children of Lot for possession. So see, God was protecting these three countries here from the children of Israel when they came out and went by them because um, uh, so many people, you know, he was having them destroy the people of some of these different lands and they were afraid that God might, you know, have them do that to them. But, but God told Moses, leave them alone. I'm not giving you a foot of their land. Now this is the three armies that God has blessed. Even while the children of Israel 400 years was in slavery, these people were already living in their promised land from God. God had helped them to achieve their lands and they were living in peace and everything. So now the, these three armies are the ones coming against God's children of Israel to destroy them. And, and that's what he brought up in his prayer back there. Uh, when Jehaziel, the son, you know, of, of one of the priests here, he was one of the priests, he spoke up and uh, said, Hearken ye all Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's tomorrow you'll go down um, against them. Behold, they, they come up to the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel. You'll not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. O you Judah and Jerusalem, fear not. Don't let the devil torment you there, nor be dismayed. Don't be confused or anything. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. The Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 14 to 17. Now, when he spoke this word and everything, they had some decisions to make. First, was it God speaking through Jehaziel to them? That's one of the first things. Is it God or just uh, somebody trying to show off you and uh, speak up like this and speak something brave or something? I'm going to take a short break here. I'll be right back and we'll continue this then. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Sunday mornings at his regular time, 6 Central, 7 Eastern. Join with him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord. Right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Tornado season has... K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org.
K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. The staff of K98talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rails. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. Welcome back. Yeah, and our story is Jehoshaphat. He feared when the three armies were identified to him as being he being surrounded by them. These three armies were countries from countries that God had blessed so much through the years. They were um, relatives to the children of Israel, in fact, you know, through Lot's daughters and also through um, Esau's descendants and everything. And God had blessed them all three of these countries so much. Now, Jehaziel. One of the priests speaks through, you know, and gives God's word to him. It's uh, uh, not your battle, but it's mine. You know, I guess God was just so fed up with him and all his blessings to him through the years. And they were now trying to take away from his special chosen children their lives and, you know, destroy them and everything. Well, God spoke the rhema, living word, which is Christ to Jehoshaphat and the congregation. Now, they had to um, decide here to accept his word, you know. The word coming through the priest, you know, in, in a lot of Pentecostal circles and like this, I've been to churches where uh, sometimes every week during the worship service, the same person will, you know, uh, uh, jump up and say something and uh, like speaking in tongues or give a message to the church or something. And um, over and over, it's the same person each week and, and like this. Well, is it just that same priest there doing this? Uh, is, is it really God speaking through that priest? See, if, if they're going to accept this message to march out of the gate singing praise, they've got to believe that it is God speaking through the priest and believe that it is God speaking to them personally because they're going to be putting their lines, the life of their wives and children back in the city. All of them, their lives are going to be, you know, on the line, life or death. This is not just, you know, uh, they sit down and read the scripture like we do and say, well, yeah, it's God speaking to them and everything. We know what happens in the end. They didn't. They had to accept that this was God's word to them personally and then respond to it accordingly. Do we just march out of the gate singing praises and do nothing else, three armies in front of us? See, it was life or death for them is what I'm trying to get to. Okay, it wasn't just a story, a cute story in the scripture or something. It was life or death with their lives placed on the line, their hope and trust in God and that being his word. Now, their response is given in uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verses 18 19. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. All Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites, the children of the Kohathites, and the children of the others stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. These were the, you know, the choir in that day, particularly like that. They stood up and praised him. Jehoshaphat and the congregation accepted the message through Jehaziel as God speaking to them. They immediately bowed their heads, worshipped the Lord for his answer, and how to handle the three armies. See, they didn't know what to do at first when Jehoshaphat feared, but now he has God's word to him. Fear is gone. They chose to accept and obey God's word to faith. See, they trusted God enough. Even with this answer that sounds so different than what they probably ever expected, and through a person, God speaking through that person to them, but they trusted God enough that they accepted His word to faith. Now, see, that's what the Scripture says it only uh, please God through faith, the acceptance and obedience to God's word. Now they, their hope was in God, but now their faith is in God. They've accepted His word to be delivered. Uh, God was, God's word was a substance now of their faith, their hope. Everything was based on faith. Uh, God's word about their acceptance and obedience and you know their deliverance. 
to receive deliverance, which was their hope, they had now to accept and obey completely God's word to march out of the gates before the three armies. See, that that's a walk of faith. That's the responding in faith, responding in your acceptance to God's word. Now, we have to go in whatever it is God has told us. Now, that's a good example of what it means to claim something by faith. See, the words of faith was the living word of God that, spoke, that God spoke through Jehaziel to Jehoshaphat in the country. That's the words of faith for that situation. Now, they have to confess those words of faith and to claim the victory by faith now. See, God's provided the way, the words. They have to accept and do their part of it. They have to, their confession of faith that afternoon to each other is, in the morning we're going to march out of those gates singing praise and see the victory. That night when they went to sleep, if some of them went to sleep, I, I doubt if some of them did, you know, they might have been a little concerned about that, but uh, they, in the morning we're going to get up, march out of the gates singing praise. See, that's our confession of faith. And God's going to perform the victory. Uh, the confession of faith, the claiming of faith, and now they're walking by faith to that point. Uh, depending e exactly on what God said. No more, no less. Now, he didn't start running around just say he's claiming by faith that God's going to do this. They didn't start running, you know, stand up on the walls of the gate and say the army's moving in the name of God. You know, they didn't, you know, somewhere around say no weapons formed against us shall prosper. All these things like that. See, they were quoting the living words of faith that God had spoken through Jehaziel to them. That were the words of faith that was going to bring the victory. Now, and they're claiming by victory only if they respond to God's word according to what they're supposed to do and march out of the gate singing praises. Now, it's different to just mentally accept God's word. If God asks you to teach a Sunday school class and to walk over and make your confession to the pastor or something and say, I would like to teach that class, you know, that you have that opening for. I would, I would like to, you know, do that. Make that commitment, you know. And then start doing it, see. That's that walking by faith. And that's that confession of faith where the Lord told you in prayer that he wanted you to teach that class. Now, and if you reject now, you're rejecting the unbelief. Because rejection of God's word to you in situations like that is unbelief. So there's a lot of people in churches today in unbelief because they've rejected working with the young people. They've reje rejected working with the elderly. Rejected singing in the choir. They see any of that rejection is between you and God. It's not just an option of what you have to do if you want to do it. Now you do have the choice that you can uh, reject it, but you're in unbelief. If you do now. So our confession is to confess exactly what God told us when we were praying. Now if we accept and obey the faith as God has told us, and then we can claim it by faith, and He's going to. Uh, perform his part then in the morning when the children of Israel go out. Okay, now the scripture tells us in early in the morning in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 they rose early in the morning and went forth to the wilderness of Tekoa and as they went forth Jehoshaphat stood and said now I guess for some that didn't sleep so good that night, you know uh, uh, he gave them a little pep talk here, here hear me O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Now, see, they did that. They believed in God before this problem ever came up to them. Now, believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. See what he's saying now? And believe, you know, that God spoke through Jehaziel. You know, God spoke a word of prophecy to them, the words of faith of what they're supposed to do in that situation. So he's encouraging them. Now, okay. God didn't tell them how to go out the gate, so, but uh, they made specific plans. Let me share with you something here. It says, And when they consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went before the army, saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. <clears throat> Why did they choose to praise the God as they marched out of the gates? I have three verses here that you need to really check out. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, Excuse me, Deuteronomy 10. Uh, I won't read the whole set of verses, but in verse 21 it says, God is thy praise. He is thy God that hath done these great and terrible things for thee. It says, He is thy praise. See, God and His Word are the same. 
Again, as I said earlier, John chapter 1, the beginning was the Word, the Word was God. When God speaks, His living Word, Christ, then goes forth and creates whatever it is He speaks. He speaks light, Christ creates light. If He speaks this Word to Jehoshaphat, that He's going to fight the battle Himself and everything, that is created through Jehoshaphat and them accepting His living Word and confessing it. See? God will back up His Word regardless of who confesses it. So they're going to go out of these gates singing praise. It says here, God is thy praise. See, when you're confessing His living Word correctly and everything, you're speaking God then out of your mouth. Just like, you know, here. Look in Jeremiah seventeen fourteen. It says, uh, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. See? Jeremiah knew that his spoken words was the living word of God, Christ, coming out of his mouth in his praise. Because when you're praising God, you know, and, and thanking him for, you know, these blessings and stuff like this and everything, you're speaking God's living word in your situation. And you can do that right there where you are. You start counting your blessings and praising God and thanking him for the things he's done for you. And that'll be God's spirit in you coming through you out of your mouth in your situation. Okay. Psalms 22, 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praise of Israel. See, God inhabits our praise. He is there. His spirit is in us when we're praising him and sharing and, and, and repeating back to him his living word. That's him. Now, that's why they chose to sing and to praise. They go forth like, what is it, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, Verses 17 to 20 says, Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always to the Lord in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, that is bringing forth God's Spirit in your heart, stirring up the Spirit in your heart and coming forth out of your mouth when you praise and count your blessings and thank him and everything. And that's what they wanted to do going out of the gates. So they went out of the gates that they should praise the beauty of his holiness. And when they went out before the army to say, praise the Lord. Now, after this was complete, the very next verse, now listen to this. And when they began to sing and to praise, see the Spirit of God moving in them and through their mouths and, and through the atmosphere around them because, you know, sound travels through uh, the atmospheric waves and like that and it was going out all around them and everything like that the spirit of God when they began to sing and to praise the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon Moab and Mount Seir which were come against Judah and they were smitten for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had done this, they were so greedy, they didn't even want to share with each other. So everyone helped to destroy the other. To the last man. And when Judah came toward the, the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked at the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen on the earth. And none escaped. All the way down to the last two people fighting. I always thought, you know, it seemed like those last two people said, hey, wait a minute now, everybody else is dead. Why don't you go your way and I'll go my way? But they didn't. They even fought there till the last two. The last man was dead. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, they found among them abundance of riches with dead bodies. See, they carried all their wealth with them to battle because they didn't have a bank to leave their money at. And they didn't have anybody back there probably they trusted to leave their money. So they just took their money and wealth and everything with them when they went to fight wars. They found among them abundance of riches and dead bodies, precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry. And they were three days in gathering the spoil of so much. And they didn't even have to fight the battle, see? All they had to do was fight the battle of the Spirit when God spoke to them, march out of the gate, singing praises. And then they, you know, they had to accept that odd response to being surrounded by three armies. What are we going to do? March out of the gate, singing praises. See, that was a battle they had to fight. Do they trust God enough to obey his word? And they did. God performed the victory. It took three days for them to pick up all the jewels and wealth. Now, and after that then, the next day then, on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Barak, and there they blessed the Lord. 
God fights the battle for us, we obey his word, we receive the blessing, he receives the praise. You know, and, and that's the example for us. Uh, don't let the devil come in. The devil is fear, the spirit of fear. He's not just an emotion or something. He creates emotions in us to try to terrify us, to keep us from finding God's will. Because, see, he knows God answers prayer. He knows God blesses his people. And if he can do anything to terrorize you during your problem. So if you've been seeking and searching for God like that, go back to Second Chronicles chapter 20. Set yourself to seek the Lord. Search for the promises in the scripture God has for you. And you say, how? Well, I don't know. If you have a concordance, look up these different words. If you don't have a concordance, go down to a bookstore and buy you a concordance and look up these verses that have to do with your problem. Um, it says in what Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, verse three, says that uh, grace and peace be multiplied to you through a knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the very next couple of verses over, it says that the great and special promises come to us through that knowledge of God. It's not just automatic that we're a Christian. You know, we're supposed to be seeking God's word. And I'll find this Second Peter here real quick and read that to you. We're supposed to be seeking His Word and doing our part of it. Okay, in verse Second Peter chapter one verse two, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God. Knowledge of God. Now, where are you going to get that from? Read and study God's Word, and of Jesus our Lord, according to His divine powers He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And most preachers you'll always hear they stop right there on the TVs and radios. But no, there's a comma, and it says, All things pertain to life and godliness he's given us through the knowledge of him that hath called us into glory and virtue. Through that knowledge. Now, where do we get that? By setting yourself to seek the Lord. Get your scriptures out. Get your concordance. Study God's word. Find out these promises. Then on verse 4, Whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. See, might be partakers of the divine nature. Just because you're a Christian doesn't make you a partaker of it. But it's through a study of God's word and getting it. Because see, God and his word are the same. So when you're studying God's word and receiving it in your heart, you're receiving yourself with Christ in you. Your hope of glory. You grow in Christ. It says we grow in measures of Christ. Look through the scriptures there. Be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the world through lust. So, now, Christ in us, from us studying after we become a child of God and receive him into our heart, the living word in us grows as we study and seek and allow him to come into us then. Now, and that's what, you know, in a problem concern and everything, when God spoke to him, to them, Christ, the living word, spoke to Jehoshaphat and them. And you say, Christ in the Old Testament? Yes. In Hebrews 11.26, it says, Moses esteemed the riches of Christ greater than all the wealth of Egypt. God speaking his living word to Moses, he, he esteemed that as greater than all the wealth of Egypt, and he left. Now, so uh, seek God's will and his word for whatever it is you're concerned about. Seek him, you know, like that. And, and, and you know, like when you lose keys. You put that in a top priority. If you if you need to go somewhere and you've lost the keys, misplaced the keys to your car, you do some hustling around and you, you put everything else aside and you search for those keys. Well, these are the keys to the kingdom. Seek the Lord. Seek his promises. In fact, in the Hebrews, I forgot exactly which uh, verse it is, about Hebrews chapter 8, somewhere along in there. It says that God so much wants his heirs of the kingdom, heirs of salvation, which is us, his children, to, to you know, uh, enjoy the promises he has for us that he double sealed them. He spoke the word. He couldn't lie. So see, that's, that should have been enough, just speaking his promises to us. But he wanted so much for us to enjoy the pleasure of the kingdom, enjoy you know walking with him and like this and being his testimony to others. He swore by an oath he wouldn't break his word, his promises. So it, it's like when you know, were children or something like that. I don't know about you, but when if we said something that um, one of the other guys or girls didn't believe something, like that, they'd say, "Oh no, you you know that's what you'd say." Well, I cross my heart and hope to die. You know that's the truth. You know, like that, we would double seal what we'd said. Well, that's what God did here. He double sealed his promises because he wants so much for us to benefit by them. Now, so you, 
And in Hebrews it also says, let us fear lest we miss any of those promises. You know, if there's something to fear, or you don't be afraid of or something like that, be con overly concerned about, be concerned about missing God's promises for health, for for prosperity, for, you know, just protection. What is it? Psalms 34, 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps about those that fear him and delivers them. For our personal protection, things like this. We've got to know God's word and trust him enough to accept his words and obey them. And here, Jehoshaphat then, three armies surround him, he was told. He didn't know what to do. See, doubt is a door that opens our heart, our lives to the devil, and then he comes in, the devil. God's not giving us a spirit of fear, that spirit. He's, he's there ready when we express doubt. Jehoshaphat had that sudden fear in Proverbs uh, chapter 3 verse 25 and 26 it says to us that be not afraid of the sudden terror that comes upon the wicked the Lord is your strength he will you know provide for you now and that sounds like my interpretation so let me find this Proverbs uh, chapter 3 verse 25 and 26 it says uh, Proverbs 3 25 and 26 Be not afraid of sudden fear neither the desolation of the wicked when it cometh you know like hurricanes or or uh, earthquakes or something like this sudden fear uh, Be not afraid of sudden fear neither the desolation of the wicked when it cometh for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken Let's see we've got a know his word know his promises you know great and precious promises they're so great you know it's it's kind of hard to believe some of them you know like that like in uh, John 15 7 is really the only one promise you need in the whole thing just about except for you know that Christ is our answer for our sins and things like this but John 15 7 says if ye abide in me we're living in Christ if we're abiding in him if we abide in, if ye abide in me and my words see his living words abide in you the living word of Jesus was God, was Christ. So if Christ abides in us, Christ is the creating power of the universe. First Corinthians one twenty four says, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. God's perfect word, the wisdom and the power, Christ, the living word that created the universe, lives in us. See, so Jesus saying in John 15, 7, If you abide in me and my words, the living words, creator of the universe abides in you, you shall have whatsoever you ask. What a great promise, you know, we have whatever we ask. Because we're not going to be asking silly things. We're going to be asking, uh, if his words are abiding in us and everything, we're going to be asking words and things that he wants us to have to be blessed with. And then the same verse is interpreted a different way in the uh, First John 3.18 says, Whatever we ask, we receive of him, because we obey his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. See, if we do those things pleasing in his sight, it means we're responding to him and receiving his words into our heart to faith, and we're living by faith. The just shall live by faith, by accepting and receiving God's word into our heart. If you're today having this great concern and everything, Especially the greatest concern is if you truly have received the, the new birth, the Christ in your heart, the child of God. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I ask you, please forgive me. Cleanse me of all my sins. I want to turn from my sins. See, a repentance, a turning from your sin. I surrender my heart and life to you and invite your spirit, Christ, the living word, to create in me the new clean heart and to live in my heart. In your name, Jesus, I ask. Amen. It's got to be an honest prayer of surrendering your heart and life to the Lord, asking forgiveness of your sins, inviting Him to come into your heart, and keep praying and seeking until you know that He's come in and He's cleansed you of those sins and everything. Now, for those of you that have been away from the Lord, you know you're a Christian and everything like that, you turn back to Him and say, Lord, please forgive me. If you want me to teach that class, I will. If you want me to work with those young people, I will. Whatever it is you've turned for, turned away from the Lord for. Or maybe one of your close loved ones died or something and you blame the Lord and all this stuff. 
The devil is the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil takes a lot of people's lives ahead of time. And, you know, don't let it happen to you, though. In um, 2 Corinthians 2, 10, 11, it says, Forgive others, lest you give Satan advantage. So many people are dying in hospital beds right now, you know, across our nation, around the world, because of unforgiveness in their heart. And the devil has come in and just crippled them. He won't stop with just causing you a pain, causing you a sickness. The, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He won't stop until he's taken your life. Because he knows any time you can turn back like you can do this morning. You can turn back to God. Say, Lord, please forgive me. I surrender my heart and life to you. See? And and the devil doesn't want you to know that. Because he knows God answers prayer. And he knows that when you turn back to God, God's going to clean you up like that prodigal son and everything in the scriptures. They'll clean you up, welcome you back, and just be so pleased. Ezekiel 33, 11, Even for wicked people, God says he doesn't rejoice in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from their evil ways and live. He says, why won't you turn and live? And and for us Christians that have strayed away from everything like that, he'll welcome us back. And don't ever think that you've done so much that God won't welcome you back, because that's what he created us for. It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And God has never predestined anybody to hell in the uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse 45, speaking to the sheep and the goats, was speaking to the goats. He said, Depart from me, ye cursed, into eternal, everlasting fire, created for the devil and his angels. No one has ever been born on this earth. I don't care. You look at them, you know, how some people are born deformed and things like that. No one has ever been born on this earth predestined to go to hell. And that means you, whoever you are, might be listening. And it means me, any of us. So turn to the Lord. He loves you. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Sunday mornings at his regular time, 6 Central, 7 Eastern. Join with him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord. Right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. Here's a few tips in finding Richard's podcast. Go to the World Wide Web at k98talk.com. Scroll down to Podcasts. When Podcast comes up, look for a red button with a white plus sign in it. Open this content in a new window by clicking the link. When a new website appears, click on Shows. Then scroll to God's Pure Word of Faith. Click on the name and a list of programs will come up. That's it. Now enjoy God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on k 98 Talk. Dot com. 
The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rails. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job.